Hey, how's it going, everyone? It's Casey here from BlueHouseDigital.com, and today I'm going to be talking about rolling shutter in Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, I just got back from China, and I was with a tour group in Beijing, and I was filming from this uh, this bus. Uh, as you can imagine, the buses in Beijing move pretty fast, and so I, I ran into a lot of rolling shutter problems. So uh, I thought I'd make a video about fixing rolling shutter. Um, first off, I'm going to talk about what rolling shutter is, uh, how to fix it, and um, why you should fix it. Excuse me. And uh, so let's hop right in. Uh, rolling shutter is kind of one of those things that's a little bit of a new development kind of within the last uh, 10 years of digital uh, videography. Rolling shutter kind of came, came around with... Uh, the advent of CMOS sensors, which are complementary metal oxide semiconductors, which is a piece of knowledge you don't ever have to really remember. But uh, the uh, the opposition to a CMOS sensor would be a CCD, and what CCDs do is they expose images and frames all at once. CMOS sensors don't do that. They expose line by line from top to bottom very quickly at like anywhere from 1 60th to 1 50th of a second. Um, so it's very quick, but when you are filming things that are moving very quickly, like in this example I'm about to show, you get uh, what's known as the wobble effect or uh, the jello cam uh, effect. So let me play this real quick. Here's a video of just a car uh, going across uh, a frame really quickly. And as you can see, if I pause it, let me pull this up make it a little bit larger, you can see that these uh, these vertical bars start to turn diagonally. And that's not because they're actually turned diagonally, that's because of something known as rolling shutter. Um, this is happening because these CMOS sensors, which you can find in uh, your iPhone, uh, any digital camcorder from you know, Best Buy, or even your, your, uh, your prosumer digital cameras, um, have CMOS sensors, and that's because they're uh, they're easy to produce, they're cheaper, uh, and they also do have great results. You will get a little bit more uh, noise um, from CMOS sensors just because the transistors are so close to the photides that uh, the photons, when they're actually creating the image, uh, can't really pick up all of the photons that are coming in. But that's something you don't really need to know. What you do need to know is how to fix it. So let me go into Final Cut, and I have just some whip panning that I did um, from outside of our house, and it's just moving real quickly, and you can see this kind of jello-y uh, mess you can see with these vertical lines at these uh, at the base of these stairs. And what uh, Final Cut Pro 10 has is a feature that will allow you to use presets to fix these rolling shutter diagonals. So when I go in, you can see that it's a little bit better. It's not great. Um, you can choose from a wide uh, range from low to extra high. And that's basically just going to determine how much correction uh, you're going to need to have for these uh, diagonal lines. Now, a lot of people will say, ah, you know, what? it's not that big of a deal. And a lot of times, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but if you're doing visual effects, um, and you need to do 3D motion tracking, you're using uh, PF Track or Bougie, uh, that will affect your uh, track points. So if you're doing uh, like 3D match moving and you have a, a whip pan in there, you're gonna want to apply rolling shutter uh, separately in order to uh, get a better track. Another thing that you should, uh, should kind of know is when you're filming in <laughs> fluorescent lighting, I made the mistake um, here's a little side story. These are actually uh, scorpions, uh, little baby scorpions, which I actually had the uh, terrible experience of eating one um, that are on a stick. And in China, they they love that, I, I guess. Um, they eat all sorts of bugs and critters and whatnot. But uh, if you notice when I play this video, that in the background here, you can see this kind of flickering light. And that's because in a lot of uh, a lot of countries, I, I know the United States uses a lot of the high refresh uh, fluorescent lighting, but uh, you know in China, they have some of the the slower bulbs, and you're gonna want to match your uh, your light cycles with your shutter cycles. So if you're shooting uh, 50 hertz uh, fluorescent lighting in in an environment with 50 hertz fluorescent lighting, you're gonna still want to shoot at 150th exposure. 
one um, sixtieth exposure if you're at sixty hertz lighting, etc. So uh, that's just something to kind of uh, to kind of wrap your head around. Let me think if there's anything else I want to uh, want to cover. Um, oh, there is there is some uh, alternatives. Uh, there is a great plugin by uh, the Foundry.co.uk that's called Rolling Shutter that you can use in After Effects, and you can actually uh, edit uh, actual elements and artifacts in your uh, footage to manually correct uh, rolling shutter. In Final Cut, they have these presets, um, which are great for th for the majority of people. But if you want to really get that rolling shutter out of there, um, I would definitely uh, recommend grabbing that rolling shutter plugin by the Foundry. Uh, I think that's it. I th I'm gonna just kind of go over a couple quick announcements. I, I told you I'm making that China video, which hopefully will be out here very soon. Uh, I'm gonna be coming out with a texture kit. Uh, I have a bunch of high resolution pictures I've taken uh, over the years. Now it's included from Seattle to uh, Beijing uh, for people who are interested in Cinema 4D uh, modeling, uh, lots of great textures, stone textures, uh, granite, jade, all sorts of really just cool stuff that you won't be able to find anywhere else. And that will be available on my blog, uh, bluehousedigital.com for $49.99. And uh, the next video I'm going to be doing is uh, on the 3D Stroke plugin from Red Giant Software. Uh, I'm going to try to do a video um, on all of their products from Form to particular to Ryzen, Echo Space. Um, but the first is going to be this, uh, this 3D Stroke feature. I'm going to show you how I made this motion graphic here. Um, and I'm going to be really focusing on the 3D Stroke aspect of it. Uh, there's a great uh, tutorial on Red Giant TV, how to create that underwater scene using displacement displacement maps and uh, trap code form, which is really awesome. And I'll put that link in that video so you can check that out. But uh, yeah, I think that's it. We just uh, we just recently went over a million views on this YouTube channel, which is great. Uh, I want to thank you guys for your continued support. Uh, it really helps a lot when you comment, you rate, subscribe. So uh, I am very thankful for that. So uh, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Uh, whenever you get a chance, check out BlueHouseDigital.com.